Okay, uh, this, quiet please. Sorry. <laughs> uh, this is a talk I gave uh, several years ago at Mac IT, and I haven't actually looked at the slides until today, so we'll see how this turns out. I'm going to have to skip through a, a lot of it because this is at least, a, I think, a 45-minute talk. This is where I tell a story. <laughs> this is where I tell a story that ends in tragedy, and that's uh, which brings me to the part where I say, you know, sometimes our brain just doesn't go the way computers go, which is it doesn't always do things right consistently. Uh, for example, once I went to yoga class in my underwear because I failed to put on my shorts. So, <laughs> so <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, the point in all of these stories is we really want to reduce our risk, right? We want to reduce the risk of doing stupid things. And that's why automation is so great we want to reduce the risk of downtime, overbuilding, wasting time, risk of cybersecurity, all this good stuff. But how do we do that when we can't automate? Uh, because there are a lot of things outside of automation with computers that we still have to do. And we have to do it consistently, and we have to do it without error. So how do we do that? Um, the way we do it uh, without fail is to execute it uh, the same way over and over as with checklist. Uh, we are big on the checklist. You've got to use the checklist. If you don't use the checklist, there will be punishment in our company for ignoring the checklist. Um, and let's see, we have some examples. Uh, okay, this is an example of somebody calls in because they want to terminate an employee. Well, without a checklist, they're going to talk to any one of our team members who may have any one of their own multiple responses, and we could have a variety of solutions that would be very confusing and inconsistent, right? But if we all look at a checklist, why leave the execution of chance? If we build a checklist, we all use it, there's really only one response, right? That's the checklist. So it's much more consistent. It's much more reliable. Um, and then we can iterate, refine, and improve that checklist. So we're constantly improving. If we're making mistakes with the checklist, well, we need to fix the checklist. And then we fix the checklist, and it fixes everybody's workflow. Now, you will get resistance. If you do not use checklist, you will get resistance, because all the smarty pants in the room think, ah, I don't need a checklist. I'm too good for that. Um, but I found that even if you know everything there is to know, a checklist is still helpful to double check your work just to make sure you haven't missed anything. And uh, in, in the talk, I, I refer to anyone who is against checklist as Mr. Poopyhead. <laughs> and uh, a lot of the reasons I hear about not using checklist is, well, it slows me down. Uh, you know, you can see them all there. So then I, I walk through uh, what typically happens, which is you've got all these steps, and then there's that one little piece that you forget to do because you didn't refer to the checklist. And then that requires you to have to go back to the client for what's called a quick fix, but in reality it takes several hours, involves my time, your time, client's time, nobody likes that. Um, and also, you know, when you make mistakes, the client starts to notice. They notice you're making mistakes. And if you haven't seen or read the book Selling the Invisible, which is rather uh, old by today's standards, but still really good content, Selling the Invisible, Selling a Service, something that you can't see, uh, clients keep score and you want to be winning in all cases, or, yeah, <laughs> or it's not going to work out well for you. Um, and then I have this diagram where I walk people through, you know, if, if you use a checklist, you're going you're gonna to take, maybe it feels like a little longer, but you're going to get it done more accurately. And if you don't use a checklist, then that project may just go on and on and on. Uh, and I strongly recommend the Checklist Manifesto. Uh, I was doing checklists before this book came out. Uh, and I, I was getting some pushback, and I wasn't quite sure if I was doing the right thing. I read this book, and I said, yes, I'm doing the right thing, and, and, and we've not looked back. Um, there are two types of checklists. There's those that you read and you do. Those are the kind that I need. I tell my team I should be able to sit down and go through this checklist and know what to do. Uh, then there's the do confirm. You know what you're doing. Just confirm it before you leave the client, before you, before you finish the job, right, to make sure you've done it all. Um, under conditions of complexity, checklists are required for success. And this plays back to some of the things Duncan was talking about. Um, you know, 
hey, would you trust your air airline pilot to skip the pre-flight checklist? I don't think any of us would like that. Uh, I took a wilderness survival class where uh, when I was under pressure, it was very difficult to mentally go through that checklist. Without a lot of practice, a lot of people can't do it. So when you're under pressure, your brain starts to melt down even more so. Refer to the checklist, remain calm, all's good. How to get started? Uh, we did a little exercise, which we're not gonna do, skip. Uh, we talked about checklist, and we talked about the checklist is not gonna cover everything, right? I, it, it can't, it's impossible. But uh, what you can do, you can read that later, uh, is <laughs> the checklist is gonna cover most of it, right? And then you're gonna have that expertise that's needed, whether your own expertise or someone else's expertise. But the checklist is gonna get you there a lot faster, a lot further, a lot more consistently. And then the software we use and I walked through some of the benefits of the, of the checklist. One of the things that we really have to remember to do is to invoice the client. You'd be amazed how many times that doesn't happen until we, get, until we start using checklists. Um, and we use, a, we use the software from Teamwork. Uh, and, and actually, I checked that referral link still works, teamwork.com slash refer slash robot cloud. And um, it, Teamwork does a lot more than checklist, but it has really great checklist templates which means we only have to build, uh, here are some of our templates, we only want to build one template and then we, we use that as a starting point for all of our checklist. So we're really big into checklist and uh, we hold people accountable for the work they do and I don't even remember why that silly slide's there. And, uh, <laughs> and we need to know who, who checked it or who didn't check it and we validate it with that and that and wrap it up and this is really important. Got that, good. I think I'm done. Automation checklist, allow an organization to blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And remember, because I, okay, zero seconds. Don't be Mr. Poopyhead. Thanks. <laughs>